Hi, Julia. 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 Hi, During the last 10 seconds of the speech, I will indicate with two hands the number of remaining seconds. A team not having ended its presentation after 20 minutes will be stopped to move on to the question period. A period of questions of a maximum duration of five minutes is assigned to the jury at the end of the presentation. I would like to remind each judge that it is mandatory to ask at least one question during this period. I will now invite the judges to introduce themselves and then you can start. I am Tatiana Oliveira and I'm the Director of Marketing for SuperC. Thank you, Tim, Senior Director for Merchandising SuperC. Good morning, I'm Geneviève Biche, VP of HR for Metro Inc. Hi, I'm Anna Kolkowski, I'm the VP of Merchandising for uh, Metro Manor. Hello, I'm Christina Bellevue and I'm an Account Executive for PG Procter Gamble. We've all been there, at a point in our lives where we're working law, we're at school, it's finals, whatever it is. We come home one night, we're walking home from the library, it's cold outside, we're in Montreal, and we really want something home cooked, like a home cooked meal such as mac and cheese, let's say. We go home, open our fridge, and lo and behold, there's literally nothing in our fridge because we're working a lot and it's cold outside and we don't feel like going for groceries. Well, this is a problem that a lot of us millennials face, as well as many of you, I'm sure, at some point in your life. And this is a solution that, a problem that we're gonna attack today in our solution. So I'm here with my colleagues, Jillian and Kelly. My name is Tamara, and we're here to present our solution for Super C. So let's start off with a quick agenda. So we'll do company industry uh, overview, as well as a consumer walkthrough, and then we'll do our opportunity statement, uh, jump into our strategy, our finances, implementation, and then finally, our key takeaways. Uh, so starting off, when we really look at this problem, we need to understand the industry as a whole. So the grocery industry in Quebec is doing quite well because food is something everybody is always going to need. Um, but as you can see, there are quite a lot of competitors that do quite successfully as well. So when we look at this positioning map, the things that we really found that were really important to supersede is to have a high value and a low price, and really deliver customers a lot for what they pay for the dollar. So looking at this positioning map, we do have a relatively high value and a low price considering the competitors, but we feel that by implementing our strategy, we can move to a better place. So looking in a bit more detail at uh, SuperC as a whole, there are a lot of opportunities that we found with this case. Uh, so first is that they're a first mover with their application. Um, it's been very, very successful. They have over 76,000 uh, downloads. So definitely going in the strategy, we want to really capitalize on the uh, application. Additionally, Super C, as well as Metro, has a brand that's truly known for their quality and delivering a really high value for their products. Um, additionally, they have a high uh, customer base with over 31,000 newsletter subscribers, so a lot of people are kept up to date on what's happening with Metro and with Super C. And additionally, there are a lot of well-located stores in Quebec, uh, mostly in urban areas, so we're going to be focusing, especially today, just in the Montreal area. But additionally, they have a lot of opportunities that we want to work with. Um, with some threats, as we talked, there are a lot of competitors, and there is a growing lack of um, disloyalty, uh, especially with millennials, and fewer visitors just in general. So with this in mind, we really want to work on leveraging the existing brand equity that um, Metro and Super C has, and use this first mover advantage by offering out-of-the-box innovative solutions. So by implementing our solution, we believe we can move Super C to a position of having high value and a low price that will really satisfy all customers. So meet Jean-Francois. Jean-Francois is a student much like myself and my colleagues. Uh, he's a university student that's in his 20s. Uh, he doesn't really like going to the grocery store and really avoids it until it's really necessary because of how busy he is. Uh, he is also saving to go to grad school, so he wants to save money and cut prices wherever he can. So he's not really loyal to any brand and really goes to wherever he can get the cheapest groceries possible. Uh, also, like most millennials, his phone never leaves his side. He even sleeps with it on his bedside table. So with people like Jean-Francois in mind, this is who Super C is really looking to target. So for this, we looked over a couple of alternatives that we think uh, Super C could look into based on their core values. So they really want to go towards loyalty, value, and reach as well. So we looked over maybe doing uh, convenient fast food because millennials do like to have fast food. So we thought of doing that in stores, but we didn't feel like this would really generate much loyalty. We also thought of maybe doing cooking classes to bring in people 
to be able to learn, uh, to be able to come into the store and buy. But again, we didn't think that they would really end up buying all their ingredients at Super C. So what we ended up doing is uh, we're going to go with our solution, which is a discount subscription box, which my colleague will now go into. So our opportunity today is that by implementing our Superbox strategy, Super C will appeal to the growing millennial consumer market through a low-priced, high-quality, and convenient online grocery service that will build brand loyalty and net an ROI of 1.16. So in other words, we're going to try to introduce an innovative solution that has an online platform that is convenient and appealing to both the millennial consumers and existing consumers that Super C has today. So, to really introduce the Super Box set strategy to you, there are really two steps to how we're going to market this. One is a digital strategy, which Tamara will go into more detail, and the other is an out-of-home marketing strategy, which we'll, Kelly will discuss. But what is the Super C Box? Um, you might have seen other boxes such as HelloFresh, which Metro is working with at the moment, and these are really successful in the market. However, there is an untapped uh, portion of this market that really can't afford that high price point that a lot of those upper uh, luxury food boxes have. So our thought is that Super C can create a grocery box. And this would be a lower price point, around $45, something that's very reasonable for, a, say, a college student who has very low income or none at all to afford for groceries each week. So the idea is to focus on simple, easy to make recipes. Um, we'll give some example of those going forward. But one big thing we also want to focus on is delivering uh, the private label ingredients. As the case discussed, Super C has a very strong brand with the uh, Irresistibles and Selection brands. And so we really want to capitalize on those and give those to the consumers to help build that brand loyalty and trust Super C products. So what we're thinking is we're going to start with uh, implementing this in Montreal. It's a very highly populated area, a very large young population. So it's a great place to see how this works with consumers. So some examples of the boxes we have are the discovery for people who want to try um, more exciting foods, perhaps a, a Mexican night or a Chinese food night. And so for people who really want to learn how to cook, um, some other examples, we have vegetarian, uh, we have Busy Bee, which could be for food that people make, like sandwiches to bring to the library. So a lot of on the go. Um, the whole idea of these different types of boxes that we would deliver is really providing an affordable, hassle-free solution that satisfies all tastes and lifestyles of the target consumer. So why will this work? The idea first is that Super C will have the first mover advantage. Well, there are other subscription boxes, and none of them have this low price point and super easy convenience that this box could deliver. Um, also, uh, we really want to capitalize on the existing relationship that Metro has with um, HelloFresh. And so by kind of using that system that you've used there, adapting it to work with Super C and working with this new subscription box. And finally, it has that Metro C look quality and really appeals to the convenience and low price focus, and it completely satisfies the needs that these millennial consumers are asking to be satisfied. So let's now jump into digital marketing. So the first pillar, we really want to focus on the application. So we feel by having a subscription box, we really want to bring this also onto the app. So how we're going to do that is by having a QR code that's going to be on the subscription box that users will be able to take with their phones and then link to the app where there will be recipe videos. So based on the ingredients that are put in the boxes, they'll be able to have actual recipes for nights. So let's say they don't necessarily how to cook, know how to cook a pad thai, they'll be able to know how to cook one. So uh, they'll also be able to track the packages, uh, know their upcoming recipes, and then use account data to personalize their coupons or whatever they're getting. And this is also a plus for you guys because then you'll have a really good understanding of what your consumers want, and then you'll be able to, to use this data to offer more customizable solutions to them. So next, targeted emails. You guys already have a, a large new newsletter following, so this is something we really want to focus on. So we could target based on consumer lifestyles, geography, purchasing patterns, whatever it is. And and uh, we want to leverage these audiences to start by advertising the Superbox and then, of course, encourage the app use. And then finally, so social media, this is something that we definitely can't go without. So we're going to be launching the hashtag MySuperbox. Uh, we're going to do influencers unboxing. So you guys may have seen uh, haul videos. So this will be the sort of subscription box version of that. Uh, next, contest to win free boxes. So uh, the number of likes you get on hashtag pictures or whatever it is. So this is going to create virality for the product. And then uh, refer a friend product. So you guys probably saw the Uber sort of uh, share the ride with a friend and then get a ride free. Uh, so this will be a sort of discount to encourage people. And of course, word of mouth, because we all know the best way to build a brand is by experience. So uh, why will this work? 
Um, thank you. Uh, so millennials do use social media extremely extensively, so this is a great way to target them. Our solution would definitely not be complete without a social media co component. Um, also, it's inexpensive, so this is great for you guys. Uh, there's also a really high reach, so for uh, a little bit of money, you guys are going to be able to reach in the thousands, hundreds of thousands, whatever it is, uh, really reach the market that you want. Also, it's interactive, so millennials really search for an experience. They want something, they want to get to know the people they're working with, the people they're buying from, and we feel like social media having a, a competition or um, anything like that would really push that. So the third part of our marketing would be uh, the out-of-home marketing. So basically everything is not digital. The first part of this would be um, the advertisements that we would put inside Metro, so inside the STM Metro. Uh, so what we would do with that is, first of, all, <laughs> first of all, it would have very high reach and it would be targeting the consumers that we want. So most people that are on the Metro or on the go, they're also young, a lot of young consumers, and they are a price sensitive market because typically people that are taking the metro are people that are trying to save money. Um, we would also want to advertise on school campuses because as we mentioned, students exactly like Jean-Francois, like we mentioned earlier, this product would work perfectly for. So we would use it during uh, orientation and even during finals when everyone gets even more busy. Uh, we would also have ads in store. Uh, we would have it in store because there are people such as Jean-Francois that even though they don't like going to the store, they still have to go to and see the different prices. So when they go, they would see this great option and want to take advantage of it. And why this will work? Oh, sorry. This is also what um, the advertisements in the Metro would look like. So it would just have what's in my super box and there would be the QR code on the bottom of it that you could scan very easily um, and you would be able to get more information on what the product was. And why this will work is because you're reaching a non-digital market. Uh, you're also going to be the first mover with students. If you go in on orientation week, you go in during finals, uh, even if there are people that follow afterwards, you are going to be the first people reaching them. And you're also capitalizing on the existing consumers that are already visiting SuperC. So now that we've talked to you about all of our strategy, I'd like to kind of summarize and walk you through what a typical consumer would go through with the idea of our strategy in mind. So take one Francois that we were talking about earlier. The first step of this is just raising awareness of this box in general. So let's say he's on the metro going to school one day, and he looks out and he sees the metro advertisement, and he sees the Super C box. Right there you have an initial uh, knowledge and brand awareness that we really want to capture first. The next step is really reaching him and wanting to get him more engaged. So let's say now he's on campus for school, and Super C has come and set up a desk to really just discuss this box option. They're the first one on their campus during orientation week to get their name out there. They're the only grocery store that's making that effort to really be there for the consumer and satisfy something that they haven't had as an option before. So once he's seen all these options and he really knows a lot about it, the next step is conversion and really getting him to commit to this. So naturally, the first box, uh, we'll try it out, see how it goes, and I'll hopefully also download the app because as Tamara discussed, once you have the app, there's a lot of connectivity that you can have, let's say with the QR code, knowing the recipes, or just getting more information about the ingredients and shopping in general. So let's say that Juan Francois uh, uses this, the, the box and he loves it. And so the next step is really building this loyalty that Super C is searching for with these millennial consumers. The way to do this once he continues the subscription is really uh, focusing on the My Superbox campaign and really engaging with social media because once you have one young member on social media sharing this content with his friends, whether it's an Instagram of his box or an Instagram or a Facebook video of the food he made, really showing how much that has impacted his life to really help the peers see that this is a very uh, valuable idea. And additionally, with the Refer a Friend program, it's so simple and so easy to just get people on board through word of mouth and through social media. So as we walk through this, it makes sense that all of these things are connected to really uh, serve all of the customer's needs, because that's what's important at the end of the day. It's really satisfying that need for convenience, price sensitivity, and good food. Uh, so by doing this, there's also the nostalgic aspect of the food. Uh, Super C was there for them in their younger days, in their millennial days, and it's a grocery store that was there to serve their needs when they needed it. So we believe that by having this relationship with the grocery store can build long-term loyalty um, and help maintain this recommendation and maintain the relationship with Super C for a very long time. So with that in mind, there are certain risks and mitigations uh, that we want to look into. So first, as I mentioned earlier, there is a risk of copycats uh, that once we have this idea and we, we uh, execute it, that other stores will want to follow suit. However, we believe we do have the first move advantage. As Jillian mentioned previously, we are going to be the first ones that are going to be engaging with uh, students, engaging with customers, and I think that will really go a long way. 
Uh, the second thing would be that there still is this time-consuming perception because millennials, as was mentioned, do want to get fast food and they want to get it over with quickly. They don't really want to go home and make the meal. However, what we feel the difference is with our solution is that currently HelloFresh um, is very successful and all of these different uh, subscriptions are successful. However, they are time consuming and they are expensive, which is where this idea comes from. However, we are going to be emphasizing on the fact that they are simple recipes and they are easy to do when you get home. So this is virtually an untapped market because there is no grocery store that's doing this right now and there is no company that's doing this right now. So this would really give us an advantage. Uh, now when looking into the finances, so we estimated that there was around uh, 1.6 million people in Montreal and uh, seeing that there was 25% of millennials that were projected for uh, 2020, uh, we put this as our assumption which gives us about uh, 400,000 people as a reach. However, we believe that, uh, or 160,000 people, sorry. Uh, we believe also that there would be about a 2% conversion rate was uh, conservative enough, which ended up giving 3,200 people. Uh, in terms of revenue, we priced our box at $45. So the reason we priced the box at this is because HelloFresh is currently priced for six meals for $60, which we believe is quite high of the price point. And by pricing it at $45, that gives a seven, uh, $7.5 meal per, uh, per meal for each person, which is quite a low number. Even if you think of eating at a fast food restaurant, most fast foods are at least $10. So this is a cheaper option and it's generally going to be simpler for our consumer. Um, so this gives a revenue of 3,200 people times $45 and we're assuming that it'll be a subscribe for the year. Uh, this assumption is based on the fact that there will be new consumers that will come in and there will be consumers that might not purchase for the whole 52 weeks. Uh, then in terms of cost, so we assume that the, the box would cost $35, uh, this is including ingredients and delivery. Uh, then in terms of uh, enhancing the application and the, create, the creative cost, it would be $200,000. Uh, in terms of digital marketing, we, it's much cheaper to advertise digitally, it'll be around $100,000. And the out-of-home marketing, as we mentioned earlier, in the metros would be uh, $300,000. This is including um, everything in uh, orientation week as well then the reach is the number of people that we will be able to reach from each of these activities. Okay. So, and this gives an ROI of 1.166, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so now let's jump into our implementation. So as you can see, we've put a 12-month period to really see how we're going to run through all of these initiatives. So first from January to March, we're going to develop the super box and enhance the app. So this would be creating the videos for the uh, recipe videos and all of that stuff. Uh, next, we're going to launch the super box in April. We feel like spring is a great time. If people are feeling fresh, people want something new, and this is the new thing for them. Um, next, the digital marketing campaign will really start in March, so right before we launch the box, and then we'll go throughout the year and as long as we need it to go. Uh, this is really something that's ongoing and experience, experiential component with uh, the customer. On campus will really be during orientation week, going through the month of October as well. And then in terms of out of home, this will really be like a good block of the year as well. So uh, before we launch the product as well as uh, into the semester. So um, to finish off with our key takeaways. Oh, sorry. So in the future, uh, the idea is really to expand geographically. So we'll try out in Montreal first to just to see how it goes as a, um, a trial period and then expand to uh, Quebec as well as Canada. Next, customization. So you'll have all this data on your consumers based on the app and all of that. So this will be a really great way to push customization and a better product for your customers. And then seasonal offerings. We thought it'd be a really cool idea to have uh, a fall a fall flavors box or a winter sort of party box. So we'll see how that goes, but that would be ideas for the future. So just to end off, uh, really, so the point of our super box is to satisfy the untapped market of young consumers that are looking for a really convenient, cheap way to do their groceries. Uh, they don't want to hassle, and this is the exact solution for them. Next, digital market, marketing. So we're going to reach a huge, huge online uh, base. And we're also going to encourage engagement and uh, long-term brand loyalty. And then finally, in terms of out of home, we're going to reach anyone we're not reaching on digital. Um, and we're going to expand awareness and establishing uh, the brand name of Super C. So thank you so much. We'll now open the floor to questions. So I do have one question. Um, so looking at your presentation, um, you did you know a quick SWOT analysis, and then you went straight into the super box. So I'd love to understand what other options have you looked at, and why did you disregard those options to focus on the super box for your recommendation? Absolutely. 
here, yeah, we can go back actually to this slide. Yeah, so we had created a decision matrix. Uh, as soon as we read the case, we had a bit of a conversation. Uh, the first thing was really fast food, sort of convenient counter. We know that Metro currently does this. So you guys have like the chicken and then the salad and all of that. Um, in terms of what Super C is doing, we're pretty sure they do something similar. However, it was an idea to really push this further um, because this is something millennials are looking for. However, we really didn't feel like this would create loyalty, which is something that we want to create for Super C, uh, and the reach wouldn't be that big. Um, for the cooking classes, this was sort of the uh, prequel to our recipe video idea, sort of tasty videos, if that uh, rings the bell. Um, and this would really create um, value for the customer because obviously they're having a cooking class and uh, there would be somewhat reach because there could be ads in store and people could come in. However, uh, this is still like on a really small scale and we feel like the subscription box is really going to be able to be sent to everyone. Um, it's a scalable idea and we feel like it will really create long term brand loyalty for you. We also think in terms of loyalty with the cooking classes, if we were to do that, they could come in, like learn the recipes and then in the end, like we noticed, they are price sensitive and not loyal to brands. So even if they do the cooking classes at Super C, they might end up just learning how to cook and then going to buy somewhere else. Right. So I guess my other question to build on that is how did you come up with those three solutions? Because there's a lot of other things that you could look at, like the mobile app, the website. I think the first question we asked ourselves when after we read the case is we looked at each other and said, what is it that you don't like about grocery shopping? Or what is it that you would like there to be in grocery shopping? And this is exactly what we came up with because actually in terms of personal experience, I tried something called Ivoira, which is like similar to HelloFresh. It's like an expensive, it's, it, it is expensive and it's time consuming. It's about 40 minutes to cook a meal. And I tried it for my first semester and it was really hard and too much work and ended up costing too much so I ended up letting go of it but if it would have costed less and it would have been much more simple I definitely would have continued. Okay. Thank you. I have a question regarding your target. So you've uh, identified within the millennials it seems to me uh, the uh, university student. Uh, we know a lot of blue collars come to Super C and uh, maybe they are already working, maybe they already have kids. How do you see your strategy being able to reach not only just the students, uh, university students, but a wider range of millennials? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we definitely talked about that a lot and that university students do represent a large part of the millennial base, but uh, we did want to keep in mind the, not only the existing consumers, but those ones that do have families and want to consider this. Um, so, uh, one big part of this is the, the idea of the not of both the digital and non-digital marketing. So the idea of a metro ad, a lot of blue-collar workers and families might take uh, public transportation and just be downtown at the city and just having that name out there and seeing the uh, Super C with the box on an ad really is a good way to get the idea and the subscription out there because we feel this appeals not only to students, it appeals to anybody who's looking for convenience, looking for um, something that's price sensitive. And so this doesn't just appeal to a 20-year-old college student. It appeals to anybody who's looking to save money and still have a nice dinner. Uh, additionally, we feel that um, by also capitalizing on the existing Super C base, by having both in-store ads and also emails to your existing customers, it's a really simple way to let them know this is an option for them that really might appeal to them if they learn more about it. So if we launch a Super C box, we are going to cannibalize our sales at Miss Fresh, right? And possibly at Metro as well. So what would you say to that? I would actually argue against that because of the fact that you're targeting two different consumers. Just how I said the fact that I stopped buying from a subscription box that was too expensive and that took was way too time consuming, I think it's two completely different targets. Because people that are going to be going towards a super box are people that are price sensitive and are looking for something simple and fast. And people that are going towards HelloFresh are people that are wanting to get a real good meal, learn how to cook extensively, and are willing to put in the time. So I think it's two completely different um, sectors or markets. Um, question for you, Thank you.